Hey everybody, welcome to the SMB Podcast. I am Trevor Swenson, joined by my co-host Adam Bance. Hello. Hey, this week we are joined with Struggle Jennings artist and fame tour. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, man, I'm incredible. That's great. It's great to have you, man. And it's nice to be here in Nashville recording and stuff. Uh, yeah. What's new in your life? Everything's been great. You know, with us not being able to tour, gave me an opportunity to really focus on a lot of different projects I wanted to work on. Just signed a girl, Caitlin Curtis, that's fucking amazing. Uh, my daughter, Brianna Harness, we just wrapped her album up, working on my new album. We just finished uh, Waylon and Willie 4 with me and Jelly Roll, about to record next month, Legend 2, with Adam Calhoun, uh, working on my other artist, Bonnie Stewart, mm -hmm. her, her new album this month. So, like, just working, man. That's awesome. That's Got awesome. A, I hear you're, uh, you're doing a, uh, a pilot for a... a TV show, TV show yeah. Too, huh? yeah, man. We uh, we we actually film it next week. So, oh yeah, yeah. Well, tell us about what, what, what's what's going on. What is it? Well, so the basis of it is, three and a half years ago, I had an ankle bracelet on. I was in a federal halfway house, coming home from prison. My kids were in foster care. You know, now fast forward, I've got custody of all seven of my kids. You know, we're moving into this big, huge house. It was Jeff Jarrett's old house mm -hmm. in Hendersonville, big mansion, just gorgeous, 10,000 square foot, nine acres. Congrats. Dream house, you know. So uh, just showing, we've got a documentary series that shows getting up to that point, but then this show is really just moving in, and it's just the American dream. You know, it's, it's being able to come home from prison, you know, three and a half, four years ago, and not give up, turn my life around, change, fight to get my kids back, and chase my dream. And now, you know, I've, I've got billboard charting records. I'm touring all over the world. I've got my own merch company. I've got my own label now. I've signed three new artists. And I've got all seven of my fucking kids, and they're all awesome, and we live in one big house. I mean, 10,000 so, 10, square feet, is that enough for seven kids and you guys? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, listen, so pe people are like, man, why don't you have a sports car? I'm like, I got seven kids. I got to drive a Suburban, man. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like that. It's like, why are you buying such a big house? I got seven kids, man. And, and, and family and, you know, a sister and a mama and like, yeah, man, we're deep. That's crazy. That's crazy. What do you, I mean, obviously you're busy as hell all the time. Like. I mean, what else have you been doing? Like, you know, what this, you, we're in Nashville, obviously. There's all kinds of stuff to be doing here because it's like Dude, again, I, I, <laughs> music capital of the world. Yeah, yeah. man. I, I literally work. I, I, I work or I family, mm -hmm. you know. And a lot of times I family with work and work at family, whatever. But, I, uh, <laughs> you know, trying to balance having seven kids, being a father, a husband. That's hard, A man. CEO, an artist, a writer, a producer, you know, um, What's the age gap with your kids, too? Eight to 21. Damn. Damn. Yeah, so we got all, I got four girls and three boys. What's going on with the, uh, are they homeschooling now because of the, the virus no, stuff? Yeah, no, we're, they're in school. Oh, you guys, the schools yeah. are open here. Yeah. Again, California, man, we got nothing going yeah, on out there. So nah, it's crazy. The schools are completely well, open. Yeah, I didn't let them go the first two weeks because they were making them wear masks. They could only go two days a week, and then they had to virtual the other three. And so that was just like, man, you know, just me personally, I've read so much horrible shit about what the masks can do, just breathing back in your own toxins and that wet fabric and stuff. It can just, you know, you're wearing one for eight hours a day, man. It's, it's not good for you. So just personally, I didn't want to put my kids back in that situation. So I didn't make them go the first two weeks. And then I talked to the school and they were like, yeah, well, it's kind of, you know, teacher per teacher. It's not mandated. So um, they're going and now they're back five days a week. They're loving it. You know, I didn't want them to lose that social. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. important. Man, it's so important, man. Yeah. Like, I would love to just homeschool my kids because I hear a lot of great things about it. But oh, I've got. That's, that's no good. There's it, no good about it. Yeah. <laughs> We're but, going through right now. It's not good. Yeah, but my, you know, my kids are like, you know, they're young and popular and pretty and want to be part of their friends. And, yeah. you know, I want them to get that experience. Like, especially my daughter, Innocent, she's in high school. Like, those are some of the greatest years that you remember, you know. Yeah. Uh, your whole life. So. And 90% and of that element is the social element of it, growing yeah. up as being a person. Definitely. And, and teaching you how to interact with people and, you know. Yeah. Uh, and get in a little trouble, you know. You yeah. Gotta, you got to get yeah, up there man. and get a little trouble. trouble at high school. Yeah. Fuck, yeah. I tell my kids, be good to be good at it. Yeah. <laughs> Make it worth it. That's good. That's good. Um, 
Well, that's cool, man. It's, it sounds like uh, the family stuff's going well. Yeah. I mean, you, uh, and it will work. Like you asked me what I what I was doing. Yeah. You know, on twelve hour studio sessions. We shot five music videos last week. Um, finished up Brianna's album night before last. So it's just it's literally I'm either in the studio, shooting a video in a meeting. In the gym. In the gym. <laughs> well, that's every day. Yeah. I, I make make room for that. Um, that's cool. Or I'm with the kids. Yeah. yeah. What is what is going on with your uh, your fitness stuff? Obviously, you know, you, you came back from, from being in, in jail and everything. Yeah. And, like, is that where you, you know, when you, you obviously lost all the weight in prison. Yeah. Which was great. And then is that where it inspired you to get into the actual fitness aspect of things? Or yes. What? So right before, what actually happened was right before I went to prison, uh, Jelly Roll, who's one of my best friends and another artist, um, we were actually living together at the time. And he came back from the doctor, and the doctor's like, man, you ain't going to live to see 30, dog, if you don't lose some of that weight. He was close to 500 pounds. Jelly Roll was. He's Jelly yeah. was, yeah. And I was like, well, let's do it. You know, I went to the doctor. The doctor was like, oh, you know, I'm getting all my blood work done and stuff. He's like, how much you think you weigh? I'm like, oh, I'm about 250. And he kind of chuckled. He's like, get up on the scale. I was 335. Hadn't even realized that I got that big. So I started working out a couple months before I actually went to prison. And – um Got the hunger for it, got the feel of it, you know, really started to love it. And then, you know, got locked up, went to prison and ended up, you know, losing 135 pounds. Came out a little over 200. And then now I've built back up to, you know, 265, 270, but a different type of weight. So that's cool. That's good, man. Congrats on that. But it's, it, it keeps me sane. It keeps me going. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. anger, tension, stress, you know. It's, it's kind of my place that I get to just meditate, put my headphones on, cut up with the guys, you know, or just zone out and just really clear my mind and push my body, push my mind and break barriers. You know, it's like it's, it's really like one of the most motivating and uh, important parts of my life. Yeah, and now you're hanging out with all the bodybuilders and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, man. Know, the old yeah, power they, they, and they, shit. They love me, man. For some reason, they can pick up more weight when they listen to Struggle Jennings. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're pissed off and mad yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, it, we were talking about the, the power lifter that you went and saw the other night. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, worked out with uh, Julius Maddox, who actually holds the okay, so strong. world record of raw bench. So he came to the gym to, to do some training and uh, – I was in there working out. We ended up talking and stuff. He ended up, you know, being a fan of my music, and I was definitely a fan of his. So we exchanged contact info, and it's happened to me. Like every time I go to the Arnold, I end up meeting a bunch of power, big power lifters and and bodybuilders that like, oh man, I love what you do. I'm like, fuck, I love what you do, man. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. so and and I, I realized that in that world, uh, there's a there's such a bond. To the to weightlifting, whether it's power lifter, power lifting or bodybuilding, there's such a bond between people. Even if they're competitive as fuck against each other, mm -hmm. it's just like a brotherhood, yeah. you know. And I've I've really been blessed with so many individuals all around the country that have. Uh, well, have obviously, really you got a big fan me. out there. I mean, Seth Ferocia, I hear you. Man, he's your boy, huh? Dude, that's crazy, man. I dropped that. God, we need you now, and they reached out like, "Hey, man, we uh, love for you to." come do this podcast. I'm like, fuck yeah. And uh, I, you know, I was already using Ax and Sledge as my favorite supplement company. Mm -hmm. um, it's my go-to for pre-workout and my pump and my uh, carbohydrates that I use. And they got a, a grass-fed protein that's just insane. Like if you got any kind of bloating issues or something, like that shit's fire. You mean it's like it's vegan or what's no, grass-fed? You know, like grass-fed cows. Yeah, like, yeah. So it's just way more clear, cleaner, and pure way. How does that work? Like it's a way though. <laughs> yeah, no, it's still a way. It's okay. Just, yeah, it's just uh, from grass fed. That one I didn't know. I knew about the 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 flavor one where we were talking about the Jack and Coke. Like I don't know how you oh, drink yeah. that, but but like <laughs> the Jack and Coke workout. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah, grass fed man. whey protein. I have to check that out. Yeah, I'm have to hit up Seth and be like, "What the hell is this, man?" Yeah, man. Axe and sled. Dude, everything they they just sent me a big box of stuff, man. It was like fucking Christmas. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to go do his podcast. I'm excited to, you know, be able to rep that brand. And, you know, I, I love it when I can, um, when I can brand partnership or, or lock in with some shit that I already fuck with or that I believe in, you know, that's the best. Like I'll never, yeah. you'll never see me, you know, fucking endorse 
something for a check. You yeah, know, I want I want to endorse stuff that I really I really love and and believe in because I, I I love my fans and I love my supporters so I don't want to ever lead them astray. Yeah, well, so that means that we need to figure out when your new line of tequila is coming out then, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch out, George Clooney. Yeah. yeah. This episode of SNB Podcast brought to you by Veeps for artists by artists, always commission free. For a full list of upcoming shows, visit veeps.com. Making good music is hard, but marketing your music shouldn't be. It's simple. Simple was born out of the idea of wanting to help musicians and industry professionals better navigate the modern music industry. Whether you're an artist, band, manager, or record owner, Simple has a solution for you. They offer Facebook and Instagram ads management services, Spotify growth, content marketing consultations, and so much more. Visit their website at oddlysimple.xyz. That's S-I-M-P-L, no E, dot X-Y-Z. No E. Go check it out. Thanks. We were talking earlier on the show uh, before we we turned everything on that uh, Adam and uh, and Strug have a, a love for tequila. Yes. Oh, yes, hell yeah. yeah. Love. Hell what yeah. was it? What was it, it? You guys were just like. Well, so we, we both, we decided that Clas Azul is definitely. That's the best. It's the <laughs> best. But I but had you're to, not, Yeah, you're not going to put it into a margarita. Yeah. But I had to say, well. Why not into a margarita, though? Because like, then you know that margarita's not going to be a hangover, no? No, you don't want to mix that shit. That's a, that's yeah. a sip in tequila. Yeah, you want to taste it. You, yeah. you got to. So you put it on ice though, or do you oh, ruin yeah. it? You put it on ice. I put that shit on ice. Yeah, I'll, I'll just you don't drink it. You don't drink it warm. Yeah, no, no. I, I've gotten to the point. I love tequila so much. I won't even squeeze a lime in it. Yeah, I yeah. want to taste that. Then tequila. You want to salt that up a little bit? No, no. I want to taste the tequila. Uh, but I like, like I was saying, okay. Clas Azul is 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 the best, but the best daily drinking tequila, which is messed up to say, but <laughs> is definitely Casamigos. You can drink a bottle of it a day, and I still wake up and go to the gym. What about whiskeys? You down with the whiskey? I, man, you or, know, I, I mean, I, you're in bourbon country. You're in Nashville. Yeah, so. no, and I and I appreciate a good whiskey or a good bourbon, and and I will, you know, I'll, I will have one if somebody offers me like, hey, this is an incredible bourbon. Try this. I appreciate it, so I'll drink it if it's that kind of situation. But I'm tequila man. I don't I don't like anything that brings me down. And brown yeah. brown yeah. had me a, a you know I turned yeah. redneck. So there's. There's a, a bourbon that I'm going to buy you since we're in town. We're gonna yeah. this. It's called H. Derringer. They named it after okay. the guy that made the gun. Yeah. And it's this. It's the only bourbon I can drink because I just hate bourbon. It's too yeah. sharp for me. I don't like it, and it makes me want to punch people. So. Yeah. Um, it's like drinking the nice you drink Jack Sours, and you're just like, you yeah. Know, the cops wake <laughs> you up in the morning. You're like, yeah, you've been here for a while. So yeah. you're like, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, it's coming as a cool bottle. It's like twisted, and oh, it's wow. the smoothest thing I've ever drank. Yeah, so man, I'll I try get you a bottle of that. Yeah, stuff, so. yeah, I, I appreciate, I appreciate everything. Like any kind of food, um, any kind of drink, you know, I appreciate good quality and good tasting and stuff that people put a lot of work into. You know, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll never turn down if you say, "Oh, I've got this," you know, super aged single malt, whatever. Um, fuck it, let's let me yeah, try, try it. Try it. Let me sip yeah. it. Like, you only live once, man. What's yeah. your favorite kind of food? <sighs> Shit, man. I, I I apprenticed under a chef for four years. So, like, I'm a foodie. Like, I love no food. Shit. Yeah, it's like one of my passions. She's a good chef. So, so what style yeah. then? I, like, you know, are you French culinary? or no, you, no, no, I'm not that fancy. I'm just uh Well, if you apprenticed, I mean, what, yeah. what are you, a steak guy? What are you, yeah, are you no, out there cooking no, fish? Or what are you doing? I'm incredible at steaks. I got a good fish game. My grill game's insane. Um, I like to do catering. Okay. So, like, anytime a family member has a baby shower or we have any kind of parties, I love doing, like, different hors d'oeuvres, different desserts, different um, finger foods. I can take a, a tomato and slice it into a rose, make it all pretty. Oh, like, cool. I just, I love that's that type cool. of shit, man. I love that shit. So, you like the presentation got, aspect of the I food? Love yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And I got, uh, I got a really good uh, prison food game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tell me about tell me your prison nachos rep- yeah. recipe. Yeah. Yeah. Can you oh, beat it? Come dude, on, dude, Doritos and ramen. Come on, yeah, man. We had a well. You have the hot nachos and then you got the cold nachos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you got the prison pizza the too. So. The, the pizzas, the cake, dude. I, I, y'all, the, cake. the cakes. You actually use a, a coffee, a, a Coca Cola to make it oh, swell. Is it good yeah, instead of the yeast or something, or what do you yeah. mean? Okay. Yeah. Oh, come on, get, let's get into. I gotta hear about this shit. We used to take a bag of creamer, cream cheese, and lemon juice and make. You can make cheesecakes oh, with no a bag shit. of the creamer. Really? <laughs> yeah. So it would curdle, and then you just, what, you'd cream uh, it up or what? Yeah, swell straight up. You just whip it up. Uh, you got guys that used to make yogurt 
underneath their bed in the dark. They'd have a culture with the with their oh, milk shit. and shit and make yogurt. So S- sweeten it with uh, like a Kool Aid pack. So my question, <laughs> is, my question is this: So if you get a shakedown, then and then sell, and we don't talk about prison if you don't yeah. do whatever. But no, I don't care. I, so if you get a shakedown though, and you have a bag of yogurt cu- curing, yeah, it depends on who the officer is or where you're at, and you know what in what different facilities what they're really going to do. Like the whole time I was at uh, Terre Haute in the feds, I had thirty eggs in my cell at all times. You know, I'd whip up eggs, I'd go make omelets and shit in the microwave. But I'd have, you know, I'd buy them from the kitchen, from homies that worked in the kitchen. I, but I always kept a whole trash can full of eggs. Okay. Did you, obviously, did you ever make the hooch? No, I never did. I've drank it quite a few times. <laughs> I was make in, you blind. Did you ever make okay. it sick? Yeah, or, yeah, no, you nah. got you to sim, skim the top off and you're good. Yeah, no, nah, they, I, I was, so when I did my state time, I was in Mount City in East Tennessee, up in the mountains, right on the tennessee north carolina yeah. border yeah them boys are cooking wine up there <laughs> you know they're, <laughs> they're like you're in popcorn sutton uh yeah but they're can- put, it's, so they're putting the fruit in there for the yeah, wine right the fruit, yep like uh, the big mash ball yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah. oh man dude i've seen them do it with fucking jelly that's because it's got the sugar yeah, in it, so like that'll, fucking, that's how you'll get it ferment yeah. so yeah. how i know all this i have no idea <laughs> man. i've heard some really cool recipes yeah. though like yeah. so now, again, prison nachos. Yeah. So, what is your recipe for prison nachos? What was your go-to? Uh, Everybody has one that I've talked to that's been in prison. So, yeah, I, I love I love Doritos with the. I like to do the two different kinds of cheese because, like in the feds, you get you can get like a mozzarella block, mm-hmm. and then you can also get like the cheese whiz. So, I like to drizzle the different kinds of cheese. I, I like to do refried beans better than a lot of guys are used chili. Man, you just um, did jalapeno. You were eating right in prison. Oh yeah, man. Oh. Dude, I, I had, you know, you, you catch somebody, you get a friend that works in the OM and the officer's mess, you know, where they cook for the officers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They bring in real food for those guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm getting like they don't take chicken stuff, breast yeah. and and uh, I got a bottle of A1 that's in a shampoo bottle washed out so that if they come <laughs> and shake it down, they don't know it's A1. I like my hair to be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, you know, it is, it's with anything that you uh, do in life, man, you – you get thrown in an environment. You learn how to survive and make the best of it. It's true, yeah. though. Like I, I, we know, we watch. I watch a lot of those shows that I mean, where they make the toilet telephones, man. Like yeah. they talk to the toilet. <laughs> I'm like, who the fuck thinks of that? I want to talk to you through the toilet. <laughs> yeah, they got cell phones in there now. Yeah, that's like crazy. Uh, I, you know, and I, and I had to, I had to steer away from a lot of those luxuries because, like, what I was going through in there, trying to get home to my kids. You know, I was watching the mother of my kids crash. She passed away last year from a drug overdose. Sorry, man. So, um, but I was watching her crash. I was watching the kids going to state custody, yeah. you know, into foster care. Um, and, you know, I knew there's a lot of things that I, I couldn't indulge in a lot of those luxuries, mm-hmm. like cell phone in your cell and shit. How much you, shit do you get into for having it? Man, you know, it, it pushes you back. You know, you get the, the more write ups you get, the less likely you are to either in the state make parole or in the feds, you know, get some halfway extra halfway house time or, or uh-huh. go through the drug program and get that year off for the drug program. So, you know, you, you fuck up, you know, uh, it definitely help set you back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'll set you back. So I did the complete opposite, man. I went in there, became the best person I could, took every class, read every book, lifted every fucking weight that I could pick up and, you know, came out and here I am four years later, I beat the, the recidivision rate. You know, I got custody of all my kids. I ain't went back. I ain't violated. I'm still on parole till 2025. But, you know. How do you feel about all the people being released because of the virus? Listen, man, I'm never going to. I think some people, I believe in second chances. Yeah. Um, definitely. And I'm never going to say that I'm not happy about somebody getting out yeah. unless they're a child molester. Then I wish. Because there was a lot of that. Too. Yeah. I wish they'd stay in there forever yeah. and ever. Because there was a lot of that in California. The craziest yeah. one was I told you about the, this the guy that in court on his sentence day goes, if you ever let me out of prison, I'm going to come out and I'm going to kill my wife. And the day after they let him out, he killed her. And yeah. they, <laughs> they let him out like six years early because of the virus. That's crazy. Yeah. But then you got guys, you know, which which our governor, Bill Lee, he's doing something this year, next year, where um, I actually have uh, a best friend that's got 82 years. He caught a murder case and there was some other stuff involved in it. It was really self-defense, but he didn't have the money to fight it and really wasn't much evidence leaning his way. But he uh, he was 17, 
Oh, you know, shit. he's been in there 21 years now. So Bill Lee's doing a thing where people who have life sentences and caught the charge between 17 and 21 and have done over 20 years of the time, he's going to review their case and maybe let them out. So I believe in stuff like that. I believe in se- second chances. 20 it's, years is a long fucking fuck, time, yeah, man. Yeah, that, man. That's a lifetime. Yeah, that's, no, 100%. That's a, that's a life. And, and, you know, what shit you do when you're young. Yeah. Should not. I don't believe he. Unless it's something like yeah, but murder is. That's yeah. a tough one. Yeah, but, a, but, that's a huge. But, but that's but that's not self defense. Yeah, they were in a shootout with yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah. if you're but doing course, something like that, but it, yeah, if you're going in somewhere chopping somebody's fucking head, yeah, okay, yeah. you can rot in there for fucking ages. Yeah. But if it's something like that where there's a question, like yeah, twenty years is you. You have your chance to turn your whole life around, like yeah. you did in what you said. Yeah, you five years. Five years. I did five years. I had a thirteen year sentence in the state. Which you know was at thirty percent because it was a nonviolent drug charge, and then I had a five year, uh, fifty seven month uh, federal charge, drug charge as well, and. But it, it worked with you. That's, that's yeah, my it, point. It, yeah, like, yeah, it worked. It, it worked. worked with me. You you came around. You well, you you go in there too, and you see two different kinds of guys. Yeah, you know, it's two different groups of people. There's guys that are in there gambling, smoking, cutting up, eating honey buns, fucking right. arguing over the TV, and then you got a lot of guys in there that are reading books, going to the gym together. You know, going going to the yard together, training. You know, and I just kind of fell into that category. Like, hey, this this is what I want to do with my time. Yeah. you know, I want to. I want to come and, out of this a better yeah, person. Man. Yeah. That's cool. And some people don't. Some people go in there and they become worse. You know, they, they end up in some real fucked up situations and make bad choices and um, get conditioned. But I don't believe anybody can not be. Um, Just make the best of your around. environment pretty yeah, much. I, don't, I, don't, I think people can. I think yeah, people can. I think pe- people Especially can do Especially after change. 20 years. Yeah. You know? I've got a friend, uh, Mikey White. So proud of him, man. He caught like a, fuck, I guess it was a 25-year sentence. He just got um, out, right? I yeah, was, he I was got, talking to popcorn about that. Yeah, he yeah. got out and he's been out about he's probably been out about a year and he's traveling the world. He's like, you know, he calls himself an activist now because he's like out there, you know, preaching the prison thing, you know, that you can you can overcome it. Man, he he did twenty some years, came out, he's got him a wife, he's traveling the world now, you know, just all over the place. Like he's literally taking a picture and every he's been more places in the last year after doing 25 years of time that I've been on tour. Well, dude, you know? <laughs> speaking of tour though, I'm glad cause we're going to get you all over the place. Like there's yeah. a lot of people interested. Like when you, before this whole COVID thing hit, you were definitely on an upswing people yeah. were looking good, you know, for, for everything you were doing, you know, and yeah. it's just, it sucks everybody on the, the music wise, like sorry to segue to it, but music wise, it's just, we're going to, I want to see how this thing bounces back. Cause yeah. you know, everybody's going to have, 14 albums ready to go at the end of the well, everybody's releasing albums october yeah. there's going to be a, a, from what it looks like what is it it's going to be three albums a day release in october I they already have it. for this year yeah for every type of music yeah, like, it's just like what <laughs> yeah we're dropping uh brianna's uh my daughter brianna harness we're dropping her first debut debut solo album called welcome to my nightmare on uh halloween that's october awesome 31st, that's cool so We'll have to see if we can get her some shows because yeah. we'll see what's open. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going to bring her with me everywhere until until she can bring her own crowd. Yeah. It's been Because they go nuts when she comes out. And, and the, really the reality is, is like first of next year with, you know, I've got Caitlin Curtis and Brianna and myself. And, you know, we're building Caitlin. She dropped her first single. Then me and her dropped two singles together, Hush, and then The God We Need You Now, which is by far my biggest record that I've ever done as far as like numbers mm-hmm. that fast um it's going crazy everybody's reposting it like you know just because of the content um you know it's really talking about unity and and love and what we need in this country right now and um yeah you were talking about that the 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 fact that right now the country's producing more patriots than, than yeah man that's one of the most beautiful things that i've ever seen is like producing so many patriots so many people that that might not have ever got along, but one thing that they can agree on is that they fucking love this country and that we should all be one, you know? Yeah. And I love that, man. I, You know, I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s and where you were fucking Lee Greenwood, proud to be an American, man. You know what I mean? Like, I think I've heard that song four times since I've been in this town. <laughs> <laughs> they played it at every bar we went into last night. That and every George Strait song was awesome. Yeah. So, so wait, you, you said you're going to be taking your daughter on tour. Yeah, she's been she's been out with me the last couple years. Uh, we dropped an EP together about a year and a half ago called Sunny Days. 
and um, the fans just they fucking love her. You know? How how is that dynamic taking your daughter? On it's a, hey, that? listen, my daughter's a gangster, bro. Like, she, <laughs> I, I was a single dad for a while, and then, you know, I raised her and had custody of her till she was um, almost right before I went to prison. And by the time I got out, she was working two jobs, going to school, living with her boyfriend, only like 16, you know. And so I brought her out on, I flew her out to Cali to spend a week with me for her birthday while I was on tour with Yellow Wolf. And she just fell in love with the road. And then I had always heard her sing, and I was like, I know she can sing, but she, she won't sing yeah. for me. So I tricked her and said, hey, I need you to come in and do some background vocals. Dropped the song. When she came, laid it, ended up turning her up, giving her a verse, and it's called Bad Company. It's still on the top 100, two years later, still on the top 100 blues singles on iTunes. Oh, cool. Her first single ever, and first song cool. she ever did. Uh, first time I got to bring her out on stage to perform was a sold-out show at St. Andrew Hall. You know, in Detroit, with uh, opening up for Yellow Wolf, so it's been it's been incredible. You know, she she comes out, she does her four or five songs with me in the middle of my set. The crowd goes crazy, uh. and um, then she's back over there at the merch booth with her boyfriend hugged up. <laughs> <laughs> damn kids, yeah, damn kids. <laughs> but she uh, she just finished her album, man, and it's been it's been one of the biggest things, uh, biggest accomplishments in my life is being able to like. You know, I, as soon as I got the budget, I did an album with my mom, did an album with my daughter. Now being able to build my daughter's career, sign other artists that I believe in. They asked me the other day, they were like, all right, so Angels and Outlaws, why is it all female artists except for you? And I was like, well, I mean, I, that is a good I, question. I plan to eventually sign some male artists, but I think subconsciously what drew me to signing female artists is because my mom was a single mother probably the best songwriter and has one of the most beautiful voices and best piano players I've ever heard in my life. She's the daughter of Waylon Jennings and Jesse Coulter. So like she had everything going for her to have a career, but she really put her career aside to raise me. And, yeah. you know, that was one thing that I watched her work two jobs and, you know, um, bust her ass to, to try to give me, you know, to keep me out of trouble. And so I think just I think it just happened that way, man. I've always been a nurturer of women mm -hmm. and kind of a protector. It's one of the things my dad told me before he passed away is he because uh, he that was killed by a gunshot when I was ten. Um, one of the things that he told me was like, "Son, your job as a man is to protect the women. They bring life, you know." And he was strong on that. You never hit a woman. You always protect women and children, you know. So I think that that's always been my head. And then raised by a single mother who went through the fucking fire, you know, because mm -hmm. she didn't want handouts. She didn't want to get money off of her family's name. She wanted to do it on her own, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I think just it, it just instilled so much in me. I'm, I'm, I've always. It's very unique. All my, yeah, yeah. All, my, all my best friends are females, you know, most of the time. And people that I trust and have around me, you know, or in my circle, I just, I'm more comfortable. Well, you know? that, that's what I mean. Like, that's very unique, especially for hip hop. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Especially rap and hip hop. It's, yeah. it, it does have a essentially a rap for being misogynistic. Oh yeah, no, for sure. And yeah, that's it's kind that, of a very interesting point. Yeah, I, is I, that, I think that's why I'm not as big as I probably should be. Because like, no, but I think that's what you're doing is unique. Yeah, you're just doing something that yeah, keeps no, your for heart, sure. And that's for sure. Of, that's and, all the power to you for doing that. And uh, yeah, and I'm I'm super like if you listen to my music, I'm super strong about that shit. Like I've got some friends that make music that you know they make they're way bigger artists than I am they make music that makes you feel like it's okay to still be fucked up and yeah. you know they're rappers you know so they're rapping about rap shit mm -hmm. but if you listen to my music you gotta be ready to change cause yeah. I'm gonna make you feel like shit if you ain't if you ain't taking <laughs> care of them kids or you out running around on your old lady or something I'm gonna make you feel bad about it <laughs> you know it's gonna definitely inspire you to be a better person not everybody's ready for change yet you know no mm -hmm. but it's, it's it's really good. My integrity is intact. Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? So. Well, that's good because yeah. the, the integrity aspect of hip hop can be a little tough to maintain oh, yeah. these days. So. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Hey, everybody. It's Trevor and Adam. We want you to check out Dynamic Talent International, the boutique booking agency with a personal attention to their clients' needs. From music talent, seminars, podcasts, and YouTube, DTI represents a wide range of incredible clients. Visit dynamictalentint.com for a full roster list and contact information. Go check it out. Cat clothing for all the cat lovers in us. 
Visit catclothing.net for their full line of cat-inspired clothes. Hoodies, shirts, tanks, shorts, and even fitness gear are now fully in stock for the fall and winter season. Again, visit catclothing.net today. Check it out. Thanks, everybody. Meow, meow. <laughs> so let's talk about Nashville. Nashville, Tennessee, Music yeah. City. Best places to go. Top three bars here in Nashville. Man, this is going to sound so cliche, and uh, but Tootsie's is still and will always be my favorite bar, probably in the country. Uh, you know, there's there's family history there. My grandfather's hung out there um, back in the day, and so there's just that nostalgia, man. It's just yeah. that you just feel that energy when you go in there. So many amazing, huge artists, you know, wrote songs at the bar or, or played on that stage before they made it. You know, yeah. so it's just that feeling, you know, especially it's just. I mean, it, it's like the Bluebird. The Bluebird's yeah, crazy, man. Yeah, I love the Bluebird. And, like, going to, like, the writer's nights mm -hmm. at the Bluebird, that's really special, too. Um, but I like finding little little spots outside also. Um, like, we were at Jolly Ollie's last night, a little karaoke spot in Hendersonville. And it was packed. You know, there was a couple hundred people in there. And my drummer's getting up there singing. And Fifi Dobson was with us. She got up there and sang. And so we just, you know, we had a blast. Uh and I love places like that that you don't really got to worry about nothing. I try to stay in the more low key, out the way places because if I go out, I go out with twenty, thirty people. Um, yeah, going deep. Yeah, I'll fly. I, if I know I'm going out, I'll fly my drummer Reem in <laughs> from Philly because he's the light of the party. But yeah, like I said, it, it, we were talking about that that out here in Nashville, man. You, you, there's always something to do here, and you know we're from California where. Pff, you can, go, you, you can sit on the street and eat dinner if you want, but that's about it. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, man. You, you, you can't do I shit. Could, dude, I couldn't live there. And listen, to be honest with you, I've got a lot of friends right now because, um, you know, I'm in the process of buying that house. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've got best friends that are real estate agents, and I've literally linked them with a handful of people from California that are like, we're getting the fuck out of here. And they're all coming to Nashville. Yeah, but do you hear this? Have, you know the stat, right, of how many people move to Nashville every day? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's nuts. Eight, yeah, 86 people yeah. a day move to Nashville. Yeah. What the fuck? Who wants to? Why are that many people it's moving here? Man, it's cool, man. <laughs> man. It's, you know, we have, we have our corners where there's, you know, high crime rates, and it, a lot of that gets brushed under the rug because we're such a tourist city. Um, but, you know, it's it's a beautiful city, man. It's got so much soul and, and so much... Uh, but it's only popped off like that in the last like 10, 15 years. But yeah. No, listen, let me tell you something. I, yeah. So I went to prison nine years ago. Coming home, like the neighborhood I'm from, the west side, the nations, you could buy houses for $30,000. The, the whole, I mean, that whole neighborhood was just trashed. I mean, you know, you had older people that had yeah. nice houses and, you know, they kept their houses up, but surrounded by factories and prisons, you know, super just low class area. I say all the time, I said, man, before I went to prison, I spent my whole life trying to make enough money to move out of West Nashville. Now I can't afford to move back. Man, I thought you were kidding. I, hey, they, they they knocked all those houses down, put these big high-rise condos and these big, pretty, you know, townhomes and shit. And uh, it's crazy. It's crazy what's happened in Nashville. Yeah. Like, I, I got out, and I'm, like, looking around, like, holy shit. Like, this city has completely changed. Um don't recognize anybody anymore because there's so many people from out of town here. Mm -hmm. You know, which it's it's a good and it's a good thing. Uh, I know a lot of people that are natives like me that are been here. Um, they get frustrated by it, but it's like, why, wow, man? It's growth, man. It's more opportunity. Yeah, it's the building. city's growing. It's building. building. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I miss some of the shit that that's got torn down. You know, I'm, I miss, you know, seeing a lot of the houses or buildings or restaurants from my childhood. But you know, hey. That's life. It's building. My kids have a nicer environment to live in, yeah. you know, and they're getting to experience this whole new Nashville. And I love it, man. I'm all about opportunity and growth and, you know. Hey, it's the bridesmaid capital of the world, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it is. Yeah. We, so we were walking downtown. <laughs> was, uh, you know, obviously we've been here a couple of days now, and it, it it is ratio of four girls to every one guy more. for oh, yeah. Broadway. It's, be it's more. disgusting. Yeah. Like, it's every yeah. – it's all, they're all girls. Yeah. And it's like – and, and they're all it, every time you go down there, you see five or six, maybe ten groups of women in their whole bridesmaid shit. Yeah, and yeah. that's in every bar line. It's five yeah. or six groups, like yeah. every bar line. It's like what? 
It's like, how is it that special if you're all doing the same shit? Yeah. Like, maybe spread it, it out a little well, it's bit. it's a thing. Maybe go back it's to Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Go back, go to Mexico. Uh, go somewhere, you know? Vegas is where you go to get divorced. Uh, that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> Nevada. Yeah. And you can't take nothing. Yeah. That's cool. Well, that's crazy, man. Uh, what else has uh, been happening? I, you, I mean, your music, you, you said you did the five video shoots or whatever, but like, when do you got a new record drop in? Yeah, stuff? well, I just released God We Need You Now last week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and title it's, couldn't be more perfect. Oh yeah, man! It's it's been so incredible. What the air conditioner turned off? Uh, that's what. Yeah, it got really <laughs> quiet. It yeah, got really quiet. Like, <laughs> like, what's like, happening? The cops are not coming. Yeah. <laughs> we are allowed to be here. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, this neighborhood hasn't always been this straight. Uh, no, but um, yeah. So we just dropped God. We need you now. Uh, I've got another song coming out. I, I pretty much am releasing a video and single every month, every three weeks to a month. That's you good. Know, That's awesome. For the rest of the year. Myself now, as a whole, we're dropping every week as a label. You know, Caitlin Curtis will drop one week. Brianna will drop a week. I'll drop a week. It's constant at, content. Constant. Yeah. You know, we're, we're pumping it out and pushing. Uh, Brianna just dropped Am I Even Human, which was the first official video that her boyfriend shot, Bernie. Uh, Bernie Vision, he's incredible dude. I couldn't ask for a better, not son-in-law yet, but son-in-law. It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, they're fucking, they're like that, man. But uh, you good, dude? You give him the, you dude, give the dad a, talk, or man, I didn't even have to, man. He's so he's he's from Ohio. We fuck with him and say he's Amish because he's got like the big beard and he comes from like a little farming town in Ohio. <laughs> and uh, and he's good at everything. The motherfucker can build. I think he's Amish. He just don't. Wanna, <laughs> he just don't want to tell us. He loves his Jesus, man. Yeah, he's man. Good. But he's um, I, I actually hired him to come film on the road. Okay. And uh, he had sent me some work because I was hiring a new crew for the uh, Widow Son tour last year. And he came out on the road, hard worker. Our merch guy got fired. He was like, hey, man, let me pick up the merch. I'll do the merch, too. And I was like, cool. And he literally, he's just one of the hardest working, humble, ain't going to take no shit, but sweet guys. You know what I mean? Like, just stand-up dude all the way around. He loves the fuck out of her. They fell in love on the road. And within two months, they had a place together. Maybe six months. No? I don't know. Pretty quick. They had a place together, like... They have a three bedroom house. He built one of the rooms as her closet, hung all these big things up and made these big furry things for her shoes to go on and turned this whole bedroom into a closet. Took the other bedroom, made it into her office and vlog place. Did this whole like Playboy print wall that he did because he, he's an artist too. Like he paints and like just crazy. Cool. Like, so the whole house is hers, and then he's got this three car <laughs> garage that he's got his editing suite, and he prints all the merch shirts now. Like we're printing our own merch now. Mm -hmm. um, he built out one whole side of the garage for all my. He does all my f fulfillment. You know, sends all my orders out and shit. So, and with the whole quarantine shit, not being able to go out on the road, I was like, man, what are we gonna do to supplement this extra income? You know, get this extra income. And he was like, man, let me let me take over the merch store because I just had some company doing it. And uh, he was like, let me take over the merch store. It's my uh, barber and spiritual <laughs> advisor. <laughs> I got to go get this while I'm wearing a hat today. I got to get a haircut. And um, he just actually drove back. Dude, my barber, I got to take just a second to talk about this guy. <laughs> Your barber. My barber. Spiritual advisor. That's right. Spirit, no, listen. My barber's name is David Manning, right? He has a the largest urban youth Christian show in the world. 150 million homes Holy shit. on a Christian channel. He's a Christian rapper. He owns a barbershop. Uh, he's a youth pastor. And he, he comes from the hood. His dad was a real deal mobster. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and is that the guy in the pool that I check out? Like he's always in the pool. With nah, his that, wife? Who's nah, that, that guy? That's, that, he he's a barber too. Okay, yeah, he's an awesome barber. Because I saw you like re, you repost him. Like yeah. who is this guy in the pool? They're yeah, just talking nah, about getting jacked and cutting hair. Yeah, <laughs> who is that guy? Go yeah, ahead, nah, he's awesome. That's Chris Reeves. I love that dude. He's <laughs> one of the best barbers in the city. Period. Okay. Um, but David Manning, he does all this stuff, and then drives. He'll drive an hour and a half 
he lives in Christiana past Murfreesboro. I live in Hendersonville. He'll drive an hour, 20 minutes um, to come cut my hair at like midnight. That's cool. And we end up sitting there talking, you know, spiritual shit, you know, life till three, four o'clock in the morning. And then he's back up running his barbershop at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm like, dude, he's a fucking monster. Oh, and he has three hot dog stands downtown Nashville. <laughs> we got to talk, talk about those hot, stag, hot dogs. Oh, they're serious. That's a, that's a boiled hot dog. Well, yeah. California, you got to get them grilled up. You got bacon wrapped. Wait, wait, those was bad this the one I had last night? Last night. Was that, that one of those that's stands? Him. Yeah. That's, uh, I don't know if it was his. I don't know if his are out right now. He's oh, okay. okay. I was going to say, because we got one last night. That was a boiled hot dog, man. Yeah. The boiled <laughs> hot dog thing. I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I'm not a big fan. The one that that other hot dog stand on. Uh, the one with the fresh peppers and everything? Yeah. Oh, what the fuck was it? It's on Printer's Alley. So we, need right to, so we need to tell David that if his hot dogs are boiled, he needs to step his game up. If, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to <laughs> grill that. You got to grill them, and yeah. then you got to bacon wrap them, sucker. So like, oh shit. you, you got to come to, when you come back to California, or whatever. Yeah. We'll, we'll, I'll we'll never take come you back to California. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not, as hey, as, not as long as as we get you playing at the amphitheater, yeah, you can come nah, back. Nah, so. I'm, I'm coming back. I, I love California. I just don't love the state it's in right now, man. I, I brace my heart. It's it's rough. It's absolutely fucked. Like it's you know they were. And again, we'll go back to the hot dog yeah. in a minute. But like, so California is the highest taxed. I mean, I think we're yeah, we I are mean, the highest tax. Absolutely, yeah. there's a luxury York, tax in our state too. If you make over X amount, I think we're even higher than New York. Yeah, Manhattan, like that. Yeah. New York County is super taxed. I get that, but California is a state. It's crazy. We have the highest gas tax in the country. I think it's uh, what is it? A dollar fifty of Something the crazy. of the price is yeah. just tax. You know, so you go to um, Arizona and gas right now is two dollars a gallon. In California, yeah. it's three dollars a gallon just because of the taxes. That's crazy. It's, it's nuts, man. So, and minimum wage is only a couple bucks more. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, we we were looking that up the other but day. The quality of life is good. I yeah. enjoy the and when the fires aren't burning. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, when the <laughs> yeah. Fire, yeah, yeah when there's, there's no fires or earthquakes. Or... <laughs> there was a big earthquake last night in was San Diego. Really? Yeah. yeah, no, it was in L.A. County. It was a four point nine. I thought it was in SoCal, oh, like shit. right between both a- L.A. and I'm they said not, nothing was hurt or nothing was wrecked, but it was another earthquake. My my mother-in-law was up last night, and she said she was watching some fucking channel till 4 a.m. She's sitting there, and I got a bar in my living room, Yeah, and all the glasses in the bar were shaking. Damn. And she, she was like, the dogs are freaking the fuck out. And to be honest with you, I don't care. Like, yeah. You know, when, when, at the past few years I've been in earthquakes, I'm like, all right, oh, shit. Yeah, it's an earthquake. Yeah, I'm not like, oh, the fuck. It's not, yeah, it's not gonna split the ground and yeah, hellfire rain loose. You know, California's not just gonna really break not, off and float off. They're not they're, they're, they're waiting that. Not waiting for New Year's time. Eve to happen this year for that. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, but, this year. <laughs> but everybody gives a shit. They're like, oh yeah, you know, like you have to deal with earthquakes. I'm like, what for? Forty five? Not even. Try and live in Kansas, seconds, like in Oklahoma. You gotta the, deal with tornadoes. Yeah, well that, tornado. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> We got so hit. You guys just got hit bad, and yeah. the, the basement east yeah. is gone. Yeah. Dude, so. I, was, I was the last German person count, stage. Right? Di- I was the last person stage dive off that stage in basement east. <laughs> yeah, I just did a big Christmas show there, and then two months later, that motherfucker flatlined. Man, yeah. I, I did a lot of business yeah. with those guys too, man. I was, yeah. I was on, twelfth. Go ahead. I was on the phone with one of my clients in Germantown, and it was like eleven o'clock at night, and, and I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And he was like. I think that's a tornado siren going off in the background. I'm like, you should check that shit out yeah. right now. Like, and he, lo and behold, he turned on the TV. It's a mile away from his house. Yeah. He's yeah. completely fine, but everything around him just. He sent me pictures. Uh, he he's a jet broker yeah. for his real job. Besides this, um, he sent me the picture of the airport. Oh yeah, and all the jets are like piled up. John C. Toon. Yeah. yeah, they were all. Yeah, just like, on the west side. Fuck. Yeah, the little the little. Uh, airport out there you guys didn't get hit with that right that's not your that's not you that's not murfreesboro or, or you're not no, I'm, in, I'm in hendersonville, hendersonville yeah no yeah. We, didn't, we didn't get hit it was literally coming towards us and then just cut right across and hit the other interstate road all the way down 40 um just wiping shit out i hate to say that but i mean that's what i miss about the midwest it rains here yeah sorry to segue on that i don't miss california it. doesn't rain i yeah, love that oh, i know I love that. Oh, I this, like to have that rain it. and that sweet smell. I see, the, I see this all the time with people from California. Like, I'm my, not from California. Though. I'm from New York. Yeah. Well, so my, so my like, uncle, well, that's the thing. My uncle Shooter, he's from Nashville. Yeah. Right. He moved out to Hollywood. Shit. I guess twenty five, twenty two years ago, 
and he said he'll never move back. Like yeah. he loves it. You know? I love it. I love I'm it. I'm cool out there about seven eight days, and I'm ready to get to a different uh, area. I'm, I'm I'm probably never gonna stay in L.A. my whole life. Yeah. But Southern California, Santa Barbara, yeah. Ventura County. It looks so, like fucking Jurassic Park. Yeah, no, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And, and, so and beautiful. the people are a lot better the more yeah. you get away from Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Agent Live 360, the world's first and only publicly offered CRM software designed specifically for sports agents. AL360 is an incredible state-of-the-art software that does everything from keeping track of clients, professional, and college teams even company finances and client return on investment. This system does it all. Visit agentlive360.com for full details. Go check it out. I got to tell you, though, mm-hmm. I mean, Tennessee, man, I love it here. I, oh, I've I never love lived here. here, but every time I've been here, the people are so genuine. You know, oh, yeah. so polite. Everybody's yeah. like, you know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, yeah. Yeah, no, sir. Like, you know, Southern like, hospitality, man. Man, just the I waitress this morning at the hotel. Man, she she was so nice. She almost sat down at the breakfast table with us and just started talking to us. And I was yeah. like, "You're really nice, but we're gonna eat some breakfast." Yeah. <laughs> I know. I love it here. I could. I could. I could move here. Yeah, I could move. It's here. it's beautiful. But yeah. I couldn't live on Broadway. I get so sick of the no, Broadway. It's, it's, no, 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 it's just man. like you're not gonna move to fucking Hollywood. Yeah. Right it's like your tour Hollywood. manager. Yeah. Your tour manager lives right off Broadway. I'm like, man. Oh yeah, you gotta no. be just hating yeah. your life. It's yeah. like, no, he, no, it's great. Yeah, like, no, okay. he's single. He ain't got nothing to do but yeah. work out all day because yeah. we're not on the road. So he loves it. He's in a big high rise. He can walk around and see all the pretty women. And, you know, yeah. he, he ain't got it. It's perfect for him. Yeah, I got I to gotta get work done, man. I got seven kids. I need. I got to have a little land. I got room for them to run around and shit. I hear that. When are you guys so, getting moved into this other place? To, it's looking like show? November. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, I'll stay in your guest house. Yeah, man. We'll, hey, we'll, yeah, we'll drink on. lots there's, of tequila. There's a pool and, house. Yeah. I'll bring you a bottle of Ace of Spades because we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I, some cigars. I, I definitely ain't gonna get no free bottles if you're in the bar. <laughs> There's a reason that shit cut off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could talk about that story yeah. again and see if the bottles can continue to get free. Or not. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. Sorry, everybody, for listening. Yeah. There's something that happened earlier. So. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he finds it and the editor gets to chop it up. Yeah, and, well, it and, would be funny. So yeah. well, it's cool. Uh, I hear you're surprising uh, one of your fans tonight. Yeah, man. Uh, leaving here, um, a friend of mine. He's a he's a trash man and a comedian. So he drives a trash truck, but That's all cool. day long he's on Instagram. He just writes shit. it writes itself. Yeah, man. It's, it writes he's itself. So, he's so funny. He's a stand up dude. He was he's like me. Did a bunch of prison time. Got out. Now he, you know he's got his shit together. Doing great. Bought him some land. Taking care of his family. Awesome guy. And uh, he reached out to me. He was like, Hey, man. There's this little girl. Friend of a friend of mine's daughter or something um she's this huge fan she's been going through a lot being bullied at school and this that you know all the stuff and uh she's having a birthday party man you think you can surprise her it's like fuck it what day it was like the 19th i'm like yep i don't leave till the 20th because i'm going out of town for four days and uh so yeah i'm gonna sneak up and pop up on a bunch of little 15 year olds and that's fucking make awesome. their day yeah, yeah. that's cool yeah, man that's fucking cool it's yeah, even man. funnier that this is the first time on the show i think that anybody's we've ever had any dated material like we oh, try and keep, shit. yeah, we try and keep it normal because yeah. when we release these a little like so, out. like everybody will be hearing this two weeks from no, now. I love, yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah, love that's that. cool. That's cool. So. so, two things you've wanted to know about Trevor your whole like, life. He plays this stupid game. Luckily, you're not a girl because the girls seem to ask the exact same questions every Do single they? time. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. see if he does. Yeah. Two things, and he's got to tell the truth. <laughs> he's got to tell the truth. He can't lie, oh, and he can't make it up. Oh man, we had Jim Jeffries. Uh, co-host on the other day oh uh-huh. my god just, i don't know you know jim jeffrey's a comedian yeah the question oh, yeah. she asked holy shit so yeah well see <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. you put me on the spot and i'm, I'm this, that's what he does he puts this, them all on the spot this guy's booking me yeah uh, you know you can ask whatever you want this man. is my booking shit. agent you know yeah but if, it, if you say something fucked up man not, yeah, <laughs> everything is fucked up <laughs> we're all <laughs> fucked up people yeah. if, if i ask you yeah. a question i guarantee i'm gonna get some yeah. fucked up answer too and yeah you should hear the stuff to so You've been to prison. We'll talk about yeah. We'll do the questions in a minute. So you've been to prison. So i got to tell you a funny story about this guy. I think we've told on the show before or whatever. So he was in Russia. You go ahead mm. and you tell the story. So tell him what. I got arrested five times in six days in Russia. Holy shit. But hold on. So What are their prisons like? Are there jails? Well, it's, it, it, it was Going detention, too bad. detention center. Yeah. So Because um, we had to, we were playing shows and we had to get out. every. I managed to get us out every single fucking night. But we, we I got held up by the KGB once, like full on. Like secret police came in, raided the whole entire thing, and I, and then we were on the northern border of Kazakhstan. I had 
So here's thanks, the, thanks to this yeah, fucking here's guy. the story. So he's on tour, <laughs> working one of our tours over in Europe, and they're in Russia, and he's texting back and forth with us, you know, while he's in Russia, and he goes, yeah. "Hey, there's some shit about to go down, you guys, you know." So just be be aware. Yeah, understatement. And, yeah, and yeah. so so <laughs> we're Russian like, okay, so SWAT Adam can pretty much handle anything because he's been through almost every situation. Yeah. All of a sudden, a text come across of this picture he takes with his phone, and behind the band member. Is a dude with a machine gun standing Sniper there. Sniper rifle. And whatever. There's a fucking gun standing behind this guy yeah. demanding a bag of cash. And Aaron and Adam Adam's just like, nah, you guys can get the hell out of here. We're not, we're not doing yeah. that. We're not and doing that. This happened every single night before, and then I ended up getting the uh, Swedish embassy to come down to our show in St. Petersburg. And then I proceeded in Moscow to get incredibly drunk in front of them. Yeah. I put a bottle of vodka in front of them and I was like, all right, let's fucking go. You're going to do this. And yeah. the passports. I was like, there you go. There's all the photocopies. I hit all the passports. I drew them, drove yeah. them inside the back of the fucking guitar amps. Yeah. yeah. So they couldn't they search all of our shit. Yeah. So, so, so needless to say, He's going to help popcorn when you guys go on tour in Europe. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I know, because I just got clearance for that shit. I, I know. That's, that's why I said we're getting – and Australia really wants to get you down there. So that's we're going to do that stuff up. That'd be fun. Yeah. Australia yeah. is an interesting. They're yeah. crazy. I know, but it's only, you only play six shows and you go to Australia. Now, I know, but that's the, that's yeah. it. Like, they go bat shit fucking nuts. Well, his, yeah. his second highest streaming numbers are in Australia of yeah. all places. Adelaide. Yeah. One of the craziest fucking cities in the world. Play it's so crazy when I hear artists because I, I this one thing I haven't got to do yet is travel overseas. Mm-hmm. But like, um, like just for instance, Ron Pope. Yeah. Who I, I just cut a song with him. He's a good friend of mine. Awesome artist. He's actually one of my favorite artists. And I got to work with him. We became friends. Uh, well, we became friends and we worked together. But um, he talking about him touching down in Europe and them trying to kidnap him. Yeah. Like straight and up, and they'll mob like, your ass too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fans will. You yeah. should see what happens in Mexico City. We'll send you down there. You get off the plane, and they're standing there on the runway with signs ready to mob you. It doesn't you could be a band that draws five people in America? Yeah, and you're gonna get mobbed in Mexico. It's crazy, it's and crazy. South America too. Like Brazil is nuts. So Whew, I can't wait to go to Brazil. I know it'd be fun. We will get you to Rio. Yeah. Good time. Good time. Yeah. Sao Paulo. Good times. Yeah, man. Sao Paulo is crazy. I love Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is. Fucking Boy, y'all are making me antsy, man. <laughs> we'll, we'll get Come you on, out. Man. We need to open these highways back up, man. Man, on, honestly, like for us going out here, that's it's been crazy because we can't even go inside of a restaurant. Yeah, like, it's crazy. It's oh, really yeah. like, like that. It's all the way locked down like that. Huh? Oh, so yeah. I'll give you this. So two weeks ago, they finally opened it up. We were California was the only land on the planet that you couldn't get a haircut in. Yeah, <laughs> Not on the crap. planet. So she goes in there and has them open it up. <laughs> oh, that you're talking about Nancy? Or, uh, what's yeah, her name? Man, Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That where she they had the no mask on. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, the politics aspect is just absolutely hilarious. It's so funny. I got bro. set up. It's not, yeah, I got set up. And, and then Trump, of course, says, "You're not allowed to get set up when you're the fucking speaker of the or the representative of the United States of America." Yeah. The 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 salon owner should be. It should take your job. <laughs> like <laughs> you can't get set up when you're in your position. What are you doing? Don't say that. Yeah. It's so funny. There it's like WWF, man. I love watching this. So That's what politics is exactly right now. Yeah. Like WWF. <laughs> like they're going back and forth and yeah. it's it's a soap opera of these powerhouses. Yeah. And it's just bullshit that never materializes in anything. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna see you in Royal Rumble, and yeah. they never do it. It never happens. Like yeah. what? <laughs> what? Dude, I'm, I'm so re- I'm so ready to see these uh, debates, though. They're gonna be fun. That I, I would pay a hundred dollars a fucking night to watch those. You know, I'd pay yeah, pay per view. This shit's <laughs> this yeah. gonna be so funny because you got some characters, man. I think your uh, your trash comedian is gonna be loving this one because uh, yeah. I mean, again, we we try not to get too politic political yeah. or political on the show, but it's you've got Trump who is as slippery as a fucking snake, and yeah. they, they love him or hate him, he's Trump. Yeah. And Biden, who again love him or hate him, but the guy's gonna forget where he is fifteen seconds yeah. into it, and it's gonna be like, what's gonna come out of his mouth? And I dude, love it. So dude, those those memes that have like just like random sentences that don't make any sense, and yeah. have like said by Joe Biden or whatever. But they have those so, for Trump too, though, where yeah, it's like you know, so where, you know, you know, I, I haircut, and it's like, what? You know, come yeah. on, man, what? Either way, it's so it, funny. It, it's hilarious. So. Yeah, but we can't we can't actually go in fucking anywhere. Like I, the Rainbow is probably one of the best places. Yeah, I love to go Rainbow. out now. But I mean, like they've taken the Roxy because mm-hmm. before it was you know that little outside bit there. 
Yeah. They it's just all tables now. The whole parking lot for the Roxy is the tables for the Rainbow because you can't wow. go inside the Rainbow. And you have to That's have a min- you, the minimum spend. You got to tell them about oh, that. Oh yeah, you get well. You, the, I love the Rainbow. Like it's one of my favorite bars on yeah. the planet. Yeah, yeah I, it's I still sat a place there and you had a beer for three bucks. But you <laughs> can't order a drink without ordering food, and they jacked up the prices on the food. And the food beforehand was already fucking expensive. Yeah, now it's like. $17 to get a fucking minestrone soup before you want to get a beer. Yeah, because uh, in California, you can't get coronavirus if you eat food. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well the, the only thing that the only thing Tennessee still believes is that you you can get coronavirus walking to your table yeah. but not sitting at your table breathing and drinking and talking to the fucking waitress. Yeah. And they you can't you get wear, up and dance cuz then you'll get They you make you wear it. the mask, you know, going to the table. I don't I don't I, I'm that guy though. 90% of the time I'm like no, nah, I, I got asthma. We had that guy on the on the flight on the way here. Oh baby, I thought there was going to be a tackling for sure. I'm <laughs> so, telling you, it was awesome. Thing. Here's what here's what I am. I'm compassionate and understanding. So if I see people that look like they're afraid because I don't have a mask on, I'm gonna put one on. I I can't put it all the way up because literally two or three minutes I got a fucking headache. Um, but you know I'll, I'll put it up over my face and and make them feel more comfortable. But that's it. If you tell me to put it on, I'm more than likely not going to spend my money in your establishment. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And that's your choice. Yeah. Yeah. That's your choice and that's yeah. their choice. And I, and I don't really have any problems. I don't know why, but nobody really ever tells me to put my mask on. I mean, it might be because I'm. You're a big scary yeah, guy. Right? <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah, covered right. in tattoos and shit. You're, teddy, you're a teddy bear. <laughs> yeah. I'm a teddy bear. <laughs> Grizzly or a care bear depends on how you <laughs> approach it. Well, uh, it's been awesome having you, man. It's been really yeah, fun. Thank you, man. Uh, before you go, is there anything you want to plug away or mention up? Uh, you know, just throw it out Still there. Still got to ask him one question. And you can oh, ask yeah. me a question, too, man. You got to ask him a question. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking get, Adam. It's his fucking. So I'll tell you what. The girls always ask me the same question. I don't know why. But they always ask, where'd you lose your virginity and boxers or briefs? So far, every girl has asked me that question. I have no idea why. That's crazy. But the guys. They don't even know. Like, that. they're just, they always ask me. Dumb shit, but but you can ask me whatever you want, man. I don't ask care. Some I dumb ask, shit. I ask. I always answer honestly. So man, y'all should give me like a list of examples of questions. I don't mm-hmm. know. See, he doesn't want to know nothing about me because he's like, this man makes me money. I don't yeah, want to know anything about him because if I know it, then I don't want him making me I money. I love throwing people on the spot with this. <laughs> yeah, I love fucking with people yeah. on this. Yeah, <laughs> he hates it. He absolutely. I, I bet. So I bet because he's got. He's got to <laughs> <he's> <laughs> answer it. He's like, yeah. Yeah, Adam's fact checks at the end. Oh, if you don't man. got nothing, it's all good, man. Yeah, so, yeah, because so. because the reality is, is like some of the questions I want to ask, I, your old lady might get upset. I don't give a fuck. She doesn't oh, yeah. care either. Just, yeah, yeah. This is full spectrum. Ask yeah, away, man. Totally fine. Yeah, if yeah. it's bad, bad, we'll edit it out. So go for it. Yeah, yeah no, I don't, I don't get no? that. No, oh, look at it. all right, cool. So, <laughs> all right. Either way, then before we go, is there anything you want to say? Let let the people know. You know, say. Oh man, y'all just stay tuned. You know, Angels and Outlaws is full force this year when i let nothing slow us down be on the lookout brianna harness's album welcome to my nightmares coming on halloween caitlin curtis is dropping back to back she's an amazing artist that we signed um i got bonnie stewart coming up this fall waylon and willie fours dropping my next solo album dropping I'm, it's called troubadour of troubled souls I've got Legend 2 coming out with Adam Calhoun this Damn. year. And that's all before yeah. Christmas. So. Yeah. Well, check this guy out. He's got a lot of <laughs> shit coming up, and he's fucking awesome. So. Yeah, check, this, check the single out, God, We Need You Now, the video on YouTube. Everybody's loving it. It's been insane. Yeah. It's been so incredible, the love that I've been getting from all these just big, amazing people. Yeah. Um, well, that's cool, man. Well, we appreciate you, and we love you. And, uh, appreciate you, man. I love y'all, man. Yeah, I'm man. glad y'all are doing this. Yeah, it's fun. So don't let up. No, it won't. Will gas so. pedal. Thanks for baby. having us. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> right. Thanks, everybody. Well, guys, we'll talk Take to you guys later. Yeah, all right. Bye-bye.